Hey everybody, it's Tim Larkin. I'm here today to talk to you about a very important subject. Listen, um, emotions are high right now. I don't need to tell you that. We've had a heck of a year. And I was going through some of my archives and I realized that I had an interview that I really haven't shared in quite some time. And it's more relevant today than it was really at the time uh, because so many more people are affected by, you know, um, getting triggered to respond to antisocial aggression. And a couple of years ago, when I was doing a book tour, um, we were being interviewed by a ton of different uh, media outlets. CBS had me come on and did an interview, and they wanted to ask me my opinion on two cases. One was the Dunn case. It's where there was a convenience store, and a man drove up, and a young man, a couple of young men were paying, playing their music very loud. There were words exchanged. It got hot. Um, the one man that, uh, came in, the older guy Dunn, decided that he felt threatened and he felt justified in shooting the young man, uh, and murdering him. And of course went to the court case. Now, the second case that they asked me about was probably one that you will remember, which was the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman case. And that was a, you know, at the time they were asking me about it, it was still really in the news. And we go over the idea behind both of them. Now, listen, what I want you to do during the interview is just listen to what I'm talking about when it comes to choice and when do you use the tool of violence. It's a very rare time, and I think it's a timely time for us to all reconsider this. So let's take a look at the interview. So when we talk about the subject of violence, there's really two aspects that we're talking one is the avoidable, and we put that under the heading of antisocial aggression. And then there's the unavoidable, that rare occasion when you have to respond with violence. And we call that asocial violence. Uh, asocial violence, its hallmark is a lack of communication. If you have a choice in an antisocial aggression, as we define it, you always have a choice. You're choosing to participate in it. My ego's hurt, so I'm going to come back at you. Um, those are the situations that are easily avoidable and that we train people to avoid. The other side of it, the asocial, the unavoidable, is where you have to take action. And you have to clearly define the two. So when you're looking at these uh, cases, like the Stand Your Ground cases that are in the media right now, um, the way to look at that is to pull yourself back from the, the end result and ask yourself, how did it get there? You know, in the Dunn situation, you had Dunn and then you had the kid playing the music. Okay, either one of them could have disengaged, both of them up the ante. When they were first confronted, Turn the music up louder. Didn't have to do that. He probably could have disengaged. Uh, Dunn certainly didn't have to, you know, overreact and, and shoot at that point. Uh, but both sides let this antisocial aggression escalate to the point to where violence was used. In the Zimmerman case, Zimmerman probably really did feel like he was fighting for his life at that point. He probably felt he was justified. But he made actions prior to that to put himself in that situation that Probably, you know, he admitted there are many times he could have he could have disengaged. He didn't have to do what he did to lead him to the end result. You know, we focus on that end result where somebody was killed, but we don't focus on all the bad choices make, made by both sides that anybody could have disengaged from. If you have the choice to disengage or you have the choice to, say, give them your iPhone, give them your wallet and disengage, then, you know, that's what you try first. Now, and the training methodologies that we use really help you understand the difference between somebody coming after you in an antisocial aggressive way and in a socially violent way. When you don't have choice, it's very clear. You have to protect yourself. The truth is that male or female, we always face the same thing when we face a violent situation. A person's usually bigger, faster, and stronger. They usually have weapons, and oftentimes there's more than one person. So regardless of gender, you know, we're both dealing with those situations. And the only way to protect yourself is to affect an injury on the other person if they're trying to harm you. And a woman is just as capable of a man of doing that. Um, we're not talking about using strength. We're talking about finding those vulnerable areas in the human body that can't take any type of trauma and learning how to affect those. So, you know, as you can see, this is very relevant for today's situation. You know, you have to ask yourself, it's very easy right now. People, I've never seen people so polarized. I've never seen people so easily triggered on all sides of the equation right now. Um, for you, you're, you're, you know, one of our people, you have, you sit there, you're watching this video, you're interested. I want to give you the best information at all times. Now, listen, if you come to me on training, I'm going to give you, 
I'm going to show you exactly how to injure the human body in the most devastatingly effective way. But I'm also the first one to tell you that if you have choice in a situation, even if it's unpleasant, meaning your ego takes a hit, you're humiliated, but you have the choice to get out of there, the choice is always to disengage. You do not want to use the tool of violence when you have choice. The risks are huge for you to do that. Ask yourself this. I was talking about something called the three-day rule. And you have to start doing this prior to an event happening. You have to ask yourself, what, what type of event would I be okay with if I found myself three days from that event either in jail or six feet under? Would I tell myself three days later, I had no choice. I had to do this. Do you think anybody in the Dunn case or anybody in the Trayvon Martin case would now, knowing what they, they're facing, do you think they would have made the same choices? I doubt it. So listen, the message is, folks, it's crazy out there right now. You need to be more disciplined than you've ever been on how you respond. Control what you can control disengage whenever you have a chance to disengage because you don't want to use the tool of violence unless you are devoid of a choice. Hey, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the channel. We're putting out a lot of great information and please share this. Obviously, this subject matter sometimes is a little sketchy for the platforms. You know, um, sometimes it's hard to get it out. So if there's somebody you care about, get this information out to them. Please share the channel. Thanks so much for listening and please stay safe.